A surprise attack on Iran by Israel? Not with Iranian long-range Saper cosmic radar. Among Iran's most strategic radar systems are the cosmic radars known as over-the-horizon radars, OTH, or as Saper radars in Iran. At least two have been deployed in the country and provide Iran with the capability to monitor enemy movements using the Earth's ionosphere up to a radius of 3,000 kilometers. One of these radars, located in northwestern Iran, provides surveillance as far away as eastern Europe. In these sad images, the radar is placed in a quadrangular array with transmitter towers in the corners at an altitude of about 800 meters. Using multiple transmitters is likely to increase the radar resolution and adjust the frequency of radar to the variable conditions of Earth's ionosphere. It detects various present and potential air targets, including low observable crews and ballistic missiles, hypersonic aircraft and stealth aircrafts, in environments with strong electronic countermeasures, ECM, and clutter. Sapir radar has four modules, each of which can operate independently and offers control in an azimuth sector of 90 degrees. The radar module includes transmit, azimuth, elevation antenna feeders and the power amplifier. The radar data receiving and processing apparatus, as well as the probe signal generator, are digital devices controlled by specialized processors. The four-module radar, which covers a 42 by 42 meter area, scans a 360-degree sector. SEPAIR is a highly effective radar system that incorporates artificial intelligence components. This technology enables the station to simulate an electronic image of a target and precisely identify its type with flight parameters. The Iranian cosmic radar is being developed in modules. It significantly lowers the cost of its production because all of the station's nodes are assembled into special containers afterward. The station has a friend or foe target recognition system and can function reliably in winds up to 50 meters per second at the lowest and highest air temperatures. During combat operations, the radar is said to be able to track more than 500 targets simultaneously giving early warning of an air attack and informing aviation and anti-aircraft defense systems about the air situation. This radar is also critical for detecting satellites in low Earth orbit, should Iran ever decide to shoot down a military satellite. The farther the airborne targets are from the radar, the higher their altitude must be in order to be detected by the radar. The main problem in detecting low-flying targets is the curvature of the Earth's surface. The path of radar electromagnetic waves is straight, while the Earth's surface is curved. A radar mounted on top of a 10-meter mast has a range to the horizon of about 13 kilometers, taking into account atmospheric refraction effects. If the target is above the surface, this range will be increased accordingly, so a target 10-meter high can be detected by the same radar at 26 kilometers. Objects farther away than this range gradually enter the radar's blind spot. In simpler terms, objects farther than 26 kilometers cannot be in the direct line of sight of radars on the ground. Sighting the antenna on a high mountain can increase the range somewhat, but in general it is impractical to build radar systems with line-of-sight ranges beyond a few hundred kilometers. One way to detect and acquire surface targets at great distances is to use over-the-horizon or cosmic radars. Cosmic radars emit RF waves, low-frequency and high wavelength, into the ionospheric layer of the atmosphere, which is from about 80 to 400 kilometers high. When the waves hit this ionized layer of the upper atmosphere of Earth, causing them to refract and return to the ground, wide areas can be covered. This type of radar is suitable for monitoring very large areas for gathering valuable military intelligence at a distance up to several thousands kilometers. The angle at which the radio waves hit the ionosphere dictates the range, and that angle is limited to a specific envelope, or the waves won't properly bounce back toward Earth. As such, placing the radar in the right place in relation to the targeted surveillance area or areas, to begin with, is key. The Iranian Saper radar as a long-range radar is capable of detecting targets with very low cross-sections and identifying all targets at low, medium, and high altitudes. 
ballistic and semi-ballistic missiles as well as cruise missiles and drones are easily detected by this radar. Since the signal refracted from the ground will be very large compared to the signal refracted from a target, some system needs to be used to distinguish the targets from the background noise. The easiest way to do this is to use the Doppler effect, which uses frequency shift created by moving objects to measure their velocity. By filtering out all the backscatter signal close to the original transmitted frequency, moving targets become visible. Even a small amount of movement can be seen using this process, speeds as low as 2.8 km per hour. This basic concept is used in almost all modern radars, but in the case of OTH systems it becomes considerably more complex due to effects introduced by movement of the ionosphere. Most systems use a second transmitter broadcasting directly up at the ionosphere to measure its movement and adjust the returns of the main radar in real time. This radar can continuously monitor wide areas and detect possible threats against Iran far beyond its borders, which will increase the time of decision-making. While not traditionally capable of independently generating engagement quality radar tracks, with high-speed computer processing and artificial intelligence-enabled software, an OTHR's lower fidelity data can prove to be very revealing and actionable. OTHR allows for persistent monitoring of large areas that would otherwise require many types of radar systems forward deployed over a huge area on the ground, in the air and at sea at any given time, which may not even be possible. Sapir radar is therefore surely among Iran's most strategic military assets. The Iranian Sapir radar is designed to enable 3D imaging. The system uses a broad pulsating signal, since all other radar concepts are not suitable for achieving ranges of several 1,000 kilometers. The bandwidth of the pulsating signal varies extremely from 60 kilohertz to over 1 megahertz. The signal is broadcast in the range around 28 megahertz, 10 meters band. The best frequency to use depends on the current conditions of the atmosphere. For these reasons, systems using cosmic or skywaves typically employ real-time monitoring of the reception of backscattered signals to continuously adjust the frequency of the transmitted signal. For an over-the-horizon radar, three technical necessities arise to achieve these desired ranges. 1. The transmit pulse must meet the energetic conditions for covering this distance. It must contain more energy than the sum of all possible attenuations on the outward and return paths could attenuate the echo signal so that it could no longer be registered in the receiver. 2. The reception time must be long enough to cover the necessary travel times for the echo signal. The echo signal must be able to be unambiguously assigned to the originating transmitter pulse in order to obtain an unambiguous measurement result. 3. The propagation of the electromagnetic waves of this transmitting pulse must be able to overcome the curvature of the Earth either by diffraction or reflections. In the past, the only way to meet these energetic requirements was to use an extremely high pulse power of the transmit pulse. To achieve adequate range resolution, this transmit pulse had to be very short, in the range of a few microseconds, and have an extremely high pulse power of up to 10 megawatts, average power. 600 kilowatts in this short time. However, more modern device concepts can use intrapulse modulation so that the transmit energy can be distributed over a longer pulse duration. In this case, the transmit pulse requires less pulse power for the same energy content. With the intrapulse modulation, also known as pulse compression method, a similarly good range resolution can be achieved as with a very short transmission pulse. Intrapulse modulation is a signal processing method that is used, among other things, in positioning techniques such as radar, lidar, and sonar. In this process, the transmission pulses are temporally stretched and additionally frequency modulated. In the receiver, the signal is temporally compressed again by means of a correlation to such an extent that the same resolution is achieved as with very short and intensive transmitting pulses for the transmission of which considerably more powerful amplifiers would be necessary. A technique that the Iranian Sepher radar uses. Cosmic radars are usually less complicated in terms of hardware than radar with higher frequency, 
but are very complex in terms of software and processing. Radar signal processing is very difficult because the reflecting layers are not at a constant altitude, but vary greatly with the time of day. The transit time differences in a multiple reflection make this concept inaccurate. So it is not simply a reflection, but a very complicated process of propagation of electromagnetic waves. Also, the echo signals are extremely weak after a multiple reflection, so sensitive receivers must be used on the receiving side. Therefore, the calculation of the distance is difficult and receives inaccuracies. The distance calculation from the time of flight measurement must be constantly adapted to these conditions. In order to enable an unambiguous assignment to the respective transmitting pulse, and therefore to avoid ambiguities in the time of flight and distance measurements, a very low pulse repetition frequency is used. Here, too, intrapulse modulation offers advantages, since each individual transmit pulse can be given a different modulation pattern. Hence, the assignment of the echo signal to a transmit pulse is made possible by this pattern independent of time and effectively prevents ambiguities in the time of flight measurement. The pulse repetition frequency can therefore be raised to values around 1 kHz. The possible pulse integration can significantly improve the signal-to-noise ratio in the radar receiver, therefore improving the energetic conditions for over-the-horizon radar. As a result, the pulse power can be reduced again for the same range. The accuracy of these radar measurements is not as great as usual and frequently used high-frequency active electronically scanned array, ASA, radars, and their use is only in the early alert section and military intelligence gathering. A country that uses the cosmic radar can actually monitor the movements of the surrounding regions from its soil at a moment's notice. With a range of up to 3,000 kilometers in distance and up to 300 kilometers into space, SEPAIR radar system will protect the country's airspace completely. The radar is included in the integrated air defense network after enabling Iran to even feel the enemies breathing in their bases. Another and actually smaller example of this type of radar is the Qadir radar. Qadir was introduced in 2012 and according to the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, IRGC, Aerospace Commander Brigadier General Amir Ali Hajizada, it has been mass-produced ever since. Qadir radar with phased array technology consists of a set of antennas mounted on a high-altitude metal mast and four lateral sections surrounding it that form the sides of a square. Qadir radar with a range of 1,100 kilometers capable of tracking targets to a height of 300 kilometers is a 360 degrees full-fledged radar and is simpler in structure than the Sepair radar and more can be produced in a short time if needed. In the context of the frequency band of the radar, it should be recalled that HF, VHF, and UHF frequencies are used to detect targets at long distances. Because of the nature of their long wavelengths, these frequency bands are less accurate than shorter wavelengths, but achieve high-range performance, as well as the role of early warning for air defense assemblies. Qadir radar system detects incoming missiles in depth and before they approach Iran's borders. Qadir can stand well against electronic warfare systems, and there is a very small chance for their discovery and destruction by anti-radar missiles. The first Qadir system was unveiled in the city of Garmsar in the central province of Semnin in June 2014. The second Qadir radar system was put into service in Iran's southwestern city of Avaz on July 7, 2015 by IRGC to enhance its air defense capabilities. Today many more Qadir systems are installed in different parts of Iran, allowing the Iranian military to fully monitor the region surrounding Iran and take action accordingly. Iran has also fielded a mobile broadband radar system with a range of 500 kilometers called Fadshir 2, which gives the country the ability to move around such strategically important radar systems. Fadshir 2 is an Iranian solid-state VHF 3D radar, and can use 100 different frequencies in the VHF band to operate in jammed environments. Due to the nature of its frequency, it can detect low-radar cross-section targets such as stealth aircraft and cruise missiles with low accuracy at shorter ranges. 
It uses two separate channels for detection and is installed on the back of heavy trucks to enhance mobility. Therefore, based on significant progress in building long-range radar networks a surprise attack on Iran by Israel, in particular using a large number of fighter jets and tankers is completely ruled out, and likely the first Iranian ballistic missiles will kiss their intended targets in Israel before Israelis even reach the Iranian airspace. An attack on Iran would be an existential threat to Israel itself, and the Israelis would better off to live with a nuclear-armed Iran than risk their entire existence. For this reason, the Israelis are very keen to sacrifice the Americans for themselves. Thanks for watching and see you next time.